it's Go Go Media Girl, and I'm with um, Big Fish School um, of Digital Filmmaking. And what's your name? My name is Skiba Petsungakanti, KB. Okay. <laughs> Andrew Roman. Uh, Andrew Miller. Nam Sangnova. Timakato Masiz. I am Mudiech Mukopa. Twiggy Matua. Okay. And uh, what do you guys do at the school? We all do um, different things. We specialize in different things. Um, well, like I like editing and camera. Um, uh, I'm so also. Oh yeah, I also like editing and also like sound and camera. Yeah. And I'm um, specializing in directing and production management. Oh, not majoring, but specializing in yeah. Mm. What do you three do? Well, I specialize in directing and and production. Oh, so you direct the films? Yes, I direct most of the mm. films. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm more of a, like a producer sort of, but I'm also interested in camera. Yeah. What do producers do? Okay, producers are basically in charge of like a whole production, like from developing the concept to making it happen to getting it as a product. So that's what a producer does. They just oversee the whole project. Okay. What do you do? Um, camera and edit. Okay. Yeah, I'm also interested in directing. Did you say anything? I do producing and directing, but I like producing more. Yeah. Cool. So, how many films have you guys made? Um, we we first we entry level, so we've made four like short documentary type of style films. But they second year, so I'm assuming they'd have done much more. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, we've done yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we've done four, which is yeah. silent film, uh, magazine uh, magazine program, and. We also, environmental did, we also did the environmental film. documentary. Yeah, environmental documentary. Yeah, but now we're working on an APSA project. Yeah, APSA yeah, yeah, APSA's a bank, so it's yeah. Yeah, just a promotional video for. Yeah, yeah for, for different organizations that, that the bank sponsors. Uh, and APSA's are like a really big presence here, so uh, we're just kind of advertising for them and uh, trying to promote the good work they do with different NGOs and stuff like that. Yeah, what skill? Okay, so I'm gonna go. So, who does producing and directing? Raise your hand. That stuff. Okay, so you three answer what skills do you need? I'm gonna go down one, two, three. Um, as a producer, you need to know basically everything about the particular show that you're working on. Like, for instance, you are the one, you are the brains behind everyone. You should know the, the role of a director, how the look and feel of the film that you're working on. You should be able to bring everyone together because you are the overseer of everything. So if anything goes wrong in the production, then it goes back to you. So the skills that you need to have, you need to be able to work with people, understand different characters of people, and mainly understand the story, because if you don't understand what you want in the story, then it's pointless. And you need to know, to have an idea of directors or people that you want to work with. So do you need like, reading skills, writing skills? Yeah. You need to be able to write, you need to be able to go out there, present the story. If, if ever you need funding, you, you, you must be able to to say to people what is it that you want. And with producing, there are different types of producers. So you can, again, choose to be an executive producer, go out there, find money. You can be a creative producer, be the one who's um, behind the writing of scripts, content, and everything like that. Okay. What, was, what was like an experience that helped you to get those skills? Um, I started with Big Fish in 2010. So Big Fish, um, the way it teaches us, you don't only focus in one thing. So I got my skills from the industry because um, I, I went out there to work and I came back. So through different people who come here to teach us and through the industry as well, that's how I got my skills. 
Um, I specialize more in directing as opposed to producing, but uh, just off the top of my head, producing has a lot of technical skills that you have to have. You need to be able, you need to be very organized. You also need to be able to have some kind of mathematical skills with your budget and at least uh, balancing that and making sure that all your petty cash forms and uh, that you can reconcile anything that you made or uh, lost on a shoot. Uh, also, in terms of directing, you have to be able to think laterally or from different angles. You have to be able to look at something and deconstruct it in your head from point A to point B to point C even. Uh, right now I'm working on a shot, we'll finish a shot list for my promo and that like have about 35 shots mapped out, but at the same time you have to be very adaptable. You have to be able to work with other people on a personal and professional level. You have to be willing to uh, compromise yourself at the same time and that you have to put the project first in front of everything else. Uh, if, I don't know, I, I don't know how many times I've come into work just like missing a complete day, like, like I just, I've come in on weekends even just to work. Uh, it's, just, it's, a, it's a very time-consuming industry, but it's very fun and, you know, very enlightening. Yeah, what is a shot list? A shot list. Essentially, um, it's a list of every single type of angle or a shot, which is just, you know, a, a clip from a camera that you, uh, you take. It's just a list of different types of shots and angles that you want to, as a director, to make your cameraman kind of... Do, you know, just it's, it's yeah, it's like your shopping list, your wish list. <laughs> like, you know, you go, you go, you go to a shoot, and you have your shot list, and like, okay, I want to do this, 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 and this. Like, if you're filming Brad Pitt or something in World War Z, like basically, okay, Brad Pitt's gonna jump over the zombies and go to the other side. You have a shot list that says, okay, but I want an angle of him from like jumping over the zombies here, there, and there. And like, I want a close-up wide, like wide shot and medium close-up of him. You know, like, that's like a shot list will have all of those different elements. Yeah, it's quite difficult because they've already covered everything. But I think one thing about a producer is you kind of have to be everything. So you have to know your mats, you have to be good with your science. Because with lighting, a lot of times you have to understand, you know, your your you know your lighting stuff and everything. So you need to you need to be good with everything as a producer. But I mean of course you need to also understand, you know, their communication with people, how to work around everything. So I think in general, as a producer, you need to know everything. Like you need to know a lot about your sound, you need to know a lot about your camera people. You need to know everything that's happening in your crew. And that I think is a challenge for producers because you need to kind of have an over, you know. Yeah, get it right. <laughs> Just to add more on, on directing, you know, also as a director, you need to have a good eye of what your picture you want to have, meaning, and also you have to, to understand people that you're working with, be able to communicate, be able to articulate, be able to send a message across to people so that they could understand what you need. So um, type of skills that you need is you must have communication skills and interpersonal skills to, to be able to work with people, yeah. Okay. So, what do you do? I'm like, more technical. Sorry, technical. Um, I really prefer technical work, um, especially because um, it's not very, it's not seen as a womanly thing. I mean, usually you'll see men cameramen and stuff like that, and that's why I really don't think it makes a difference if you're a man or woman if you can lift a camera. I think it. But what the skills you need, um, you definitely need to be able to like speak the language of technology. You have to. Be, you have to have some mathematical skills, but also you need to be very creative in terms of editing and camera work. Um, so there's, it's, it's a creative side and the technical side that comes together when it comes to camera and editing, yeah. Okay. What's an often used but little understood term in the industry for the technical side? What, sorry, say that again? Like, we have our jargon, our language. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's, what's a term that's little understood but um, often used? Even even things that are easy to us is like um, our angles and our shot types, like MCU, mid, medium close up, things like that. People don't usually understand. That's something sim um, easy. But in terms of edit, um, things like rendering and the effects you have and stuff, that terminology I don't think a lot of people understand unless you practice. Yeah. Does that, does that answer it fully? Yeah. Well, Not really. Even open up there for people to learn. <laughs> Um, what can I digest in film? Like. Login transferring, um, 
digitizing is basically digitizing for editing is basically taking the footage from your camera and making it understandable for the computer. So you're just converting the language of the camera to the edit suite. That's what digitizing is. And uh, capture, scratch, and log and transfer come in with that. Is that a good enough explanation? <laughs> Any other tech people? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, me, for me, it's camera and um, editing. But basically, on camera, you also need to um, know your story and also be willing to take instructions because as a camera person, you work under your director and your producer. So, yeah, as a camera person, you need to know your story and also be creative. And um, you should be a person that is um, willing to think abroad. Then, like, you, you need to be, like, a critical thinker because with a camera, you can also tell a story with just pictures and without words. So, yeah. And also understanding um, lighting, you know, to set the mood for, for the film. So lighting is very important as well as to if you go outside and you want to shoot and you want to use lights, uh, which type of lights you're going to use and if you're inside, which type of feel that you want to, to have on the film. So things like that, you have to understand them. Yeah. Yeah, about the other thing that we haven't mentioned so far is sound, and sound is very important. So that is why I'm a producer, you see, because I bring everything together. So if you need to know different types of mics that you'll be using. You need to know if you go outside and it's windy, what kind of mic are you going to use? Do you need a Zablon for that mic? If you are doing an interview, with a person walking, do you need a radio mic? Or are you going to use a lapel? Is lapel going to work for you? So you need to know those things. And for an interview, um, let's say you're doing Vox Pops, what kind of mic do you want? Things like that. Mm -hmm. You want to ask about some of the terms? Terms? The terms, Vox Pop, you say Can I answer that? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, box pops. Uh, uh, box pops are like when it's like something like this. Like what you're doing, like or maybe you're in a mall. You wanna ask questions, like any question. You can yeah, rent that to random people, to random questions to random people. Yeah, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And with the with the Zeppelin. Oh, a Zeppelin. Okay, you can answer that next slide. <laughs> okay, um, a Zeppelin is part of our, our sound our sound equipment, and it's basically um, used with uh, with with a mic. It is used with a lapel mic, right? A rifle, uh, a rifle mic. Sorry, yeah. it is used with a rifle mic, and usually you would have it on a boom pole, which oh, is the the long the pole. High. Yeah, okay. yeah. So oh, yeah. Okay. And the purpose. A what? And the purpose of it. Yeah. The purpose of a purpose of a well, it blocks wind. It, it blocks the wind and yeah, those the background sound, the background noise as well. So meaning if you're shooting exterior, yeah, exterior. you can use that. Because nothing kills a shoot like bad sound. That's the worst, absolute worst thing you can have. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and what about what do you do at the school? Well, I also do. I'm um, I'm doing editing and um, what's this? Cam. And not camera. Sound. I'm doing and sound. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm still learning the two because I'm still new in, in the uh, editing and sound thingy. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any um, last tips? Or? Yeah, tips about just in between the lapel and the. Sure. Just the different mics. Yeah, a lapel is those ones that you put over here. Oh, yeah, like the lap. Yeah. And then the radio is basically looks like a lapel, but it uses radio signals to get to the transmitter and the mm -hmm. receiver. Yeah. yeah, that's just what other mics like really? this. Cause the, um, this is a dynamic, right? Yeah, this is dynamic mic. This is gonna go out. Yeah, that's gonna be that's yes, yeah, so that's basically a radio. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's just to clarify what the yeah. terms are. Yeah. So any last yeah, any tips, tips or things that young girls should be really considering, like yeah. for positions, you know, Do like some you know? at this age. Yeah. No, what should they prepare for? Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely, if you want to do technical, you should really just like just research Google and like take you to get in tune with your technical skills. But your computer skills are very important. Just know your technology and just, like watch, read lots of books and watch lots of movies to know the structure of stories. Yeah, that's advice I would give for if mm -hmm. someone who wants to do technical skills at this age. And also. Oh. 
Okay, <laughs> sorry. And also, if you've got, if you've got passion for, for if, if you've got passion, if you've got passion for what you want to do, then you'll be successful in what you want to do. Like, yeah. Um, uh, is very important. School. So you should go to school first mm -hmm. to learn all those things. Learn the language. Learn everything. Then your passion will follow. As long as you have education, it's very important. Yeah, yeah I think the best thing. Uh, for you, I suppose, find a very find research and maybe find a film school that would just fit you, I suppose, and maybe work towards that film school or something. Because film school is the only instance in your professional career where you'll be able to experiment and ask questions and get the information and knowledge that you'll use for the rest of your career. Because I don't think there's anywhere else but in this kind of environment, like especially, and we're so grateful to have it here at Big Fish, where we can just we can make mistakes and we can fail because we're in that kind of safe space. Yes, it's stressful. Yes, it's very difficult sometimes, but there are people that are going to catch you if you fall and if you mess up. And that's what this kind of work institution does and what I think is awesome. That was the students. Uh, you want to start off? Yeah, um, for me, I'd basically say that I grab whatever that you, get, that you get from that life skills class because it really helps in terms of your interpersonal relationships with people. You are able to work in a stressful environment, which is, I mean, like, the, some of the conditions that which we work within. So yeah, like with that life skills class, don't take it for granted. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That was the students from Big Fish School, South Africa. And Google Media Girl. <laughs>